All right, so this is the PU monthly report. Honestly, I'm just trying to stretch out in content. I hope you all enjoy this. If you want me to cover the Squadron 42 um, report as well, let us know in the comments. Your best feedback is the comments right now at all. And that's why I've been doing a bunch of polls. Where the f is the progress tracker? AI features. So following the launch of Alpha 3.23, AI features supported the upcoming point patch and future releases specifically that work. they worked towards consistent behaviors across different combat scenarios ensuring that AI characters react in believable ways. No matter what situation they're in, the team began by improving and unifying perception reactions, improving cover use in different scenarios, making holistic evaluation of all combat elements to ensure they worked as intended. This is particularly important with the recent improvements to the hostility system. For example, if an AI comes across two other, others fighting, they are friendly with both. Doing nothing is not a valid response as the first pass implementation for Alpha 3.23, the AI will run and cower when this situation arises. Though this isn't deal, this isn't ideal and will improve, be improved upon an upcoming release. So one thing I noticed uh, myself, Lee and myself went to do some bunkers, illegal, like we just went in there and just started raiding bunkers, getting crime stats. <laughs> we killed the security and I didn't realize but one of the like civilian NPCs had picked up a weapon I was like that's kind of weird I've never seen him do that before and actively ran at me and aimed at me I didn't give him a chance to shoot because I wasn't about to find out but just beware if you do any illegal missions and they're civilians kill the kill them because they'll pick up the body the guns off the dead bodies and they will actively pursue you so going on AI tech. So last month AI tech supported Alpha 3.23 with bug fixing and optimizations. This included adding new metrics to better understand the size of Pathfinder requests on live builds, navigating tile generation requests and the number of active NPCs and voids. Improvements were made to the functionality of NPCs pushing trolleys and using elevators alongside updates to behaviors for elevator use, smoother animations when NPCs moved away from trolleys and improved functionality for NPCs parking trolleys were implemented too. AI tech also began to work on allowing NPCs to understand when cover is being destroyed or when parts of a usable are being destroyed. This will prevent NPCs from attempting to find or use suitable cover. For Ship AI, the team continued making improvements and fixing bugs related to the following splines and backstrafing. You know, I never really read these reports, but they're kind of informative and that was a pretty good read. I'm not gonna lie, that was some good information to know that they're doing that with the NPCs and when something's being destroyed, they'll be like, oh, no, better not go there. So animations, in May, gameplay animation focused work on numerous creatures, including the unreleased Quasi Grazer, the Space Cow. I don't actually know how to say it, but that's how I'm going to say it. And then moving through uh, art characters, in May, the character art team completed the high poly phase for two specialist armors and continued updating the utility armor. A new heavy specialist armor began development too. Ooh, that sounds good. Character art also supported a request for the character customizer while the hair team started work on new hairstyles for the future releases. Progress was also made on future creatures. Can I just say that one thing is with some helmets, like having a big massive beard, <laughs> it goes through the helmet. It's like, why? Why is it doing this? All right, so in the latest roadmap roundup more t details were shared about the upcoming alpha 4.0 patch the team then visited be at con be at con or whatever that is event in mid may in liege belgium so yeah there you go there's more stuff there uh the community team supported the recent invictus launch week with an faq the free fly schedule the um anvil hornet mark one sunset faq Updates to the Ages of Saber, Firebird, and Retaliator, as we did go over that in a previous video. Q&A com links for the Ages Saber, Firebird, the MPVUV Tractor, the Ursa Medivac. 
Uh, they also published an update about the Overdrive Initiative event and ran the I'm Doing My Part video contest, challenging players to create a 15 second video showing how they supported the Empire during Invictus launch week. So what did you do during that? Who won? Is it even still going? I don't really follow these competitions. Um, support was provided for various community events, including the uh, System 7 Ground Racing League from Atmo Esports and the Ignition Expo from Anzia Racing. The community team continued detailing the weekly publishes with This Week in Star Citizen and updated the Arena Commander schedule. Preparations for CitizenCon 2954 are also underway and the team is dedicated to delivering an unforgettable experience, currently working through presentations, refining layout, and other fun surprises. People keep telling me I should go to CitizenCon. Honestly, it's just financially not viable. I would like to go, but honestly, I don't really feel like going to England or America to just to go to one event. I mean, if it was sponsored, maybe, but anyway. Core gameplay um, pillar was spent May closing out tasks and bug fixing for Alpha 3.23 and Point one of the patch while part of the team focused on the final touches for the cargo feature the majority continued working on gameplay features for alpha 4.0 and beyond in may the core gameplay pillar completed a significant amount of work on the multi-tool refactor planned for alpha 4.0 this will provide a more streamlined experience by putting the tools primary attachment action on the left mouse button and secondary action on the right Planning for the remaining multi-tool refactor work, such as an updated UI and battery consumption, was also completed. Ah, oh, nice. Sweet. I know they were meant to get better, but that's that's good news. For biome accumulation, the team completed further SQ42 porting work and scoped out how the feature will in integrate into the weather system. Nice. Charge and Drain also continued through pre-production and will now utilize the resource network, support multiplayer, and the ability to charge and drain distortion damage from ship components. Oh my god. They're getting into this. <laughs> Quantum Travel is being reviewed to assess any aspects that need to be made server meshing compatible beyond issues observed during tech preview tests. Support for the Arena Commander's engineering mode was provided to allow items to be repaired once they reached zero health. May also saw the core gameplay pillar improving various profiling tools that assess the performance of characters, vehicles, and interactable, interactable entities, entities. This will provide more and better quality data. Locomotion improvements for NPCs performing sharp turns were completed, which will allow characters and creatures to switch direction more smoothly work required to adapt the inventory system to server meshing was scoped out as it will require a rework of its back end to scale appropriately the initial version of jump drive failure events was implemented in may now when a ship's jump drive is disabled or damaged the player will be forced out of the tunnel oh my god which correctly aligns with the exit point in the destination star system Further improvements to the debug tools for jump point gameplay were implemented too. Oh my god. For engineering gameplay, their team implemented power tools which allow the streamlined power management of grouped items like weapons and thrusters. The resource network was enabled by default in the main Star Citizen development branch, which ensures all teams can work with it and integrate their features to con or content with it. Nice. It sounds like they're making a little bit of progress. Like, this is good. Like I said, I don't read these that often, so this is this is sounding good. <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you think of all this progress. Like, yeah. For Transit, the team continued general release support for Alpha 3.23 and the upcoming cargo and personal hangar update. Scope, technical, and planning discussions concluded for the Transit refactor, which is now in active development. Estimates and scheduling were completed for the remaining radar and scanning tasks, including deliverable targets. Team members supporting the patch release concluded their work and moved to supporting radar and scanning. Yes, radar and scanning. Uh, work was done on the objects of interest mechanic, which will allow designers to set up objects within the PU or Squadron 42 with various parameters and a special scan highlight. A special material was also applied when an object is occluded so that it shows one material when within line of sight and another when obstructed. Hmm, okay. 
Um, the team also added a fading effect for highlighted objects based on distance. Additionally, work was done on including organization information in FPS scan data. Oh, my God. While the new SF uh, SFX was added when attempting to ping while the ability is on cooldown. The team also completed checks between the PU and Squadron 42 streams, raising differences so that the team can continue to port features from the Squadron 42 feature set. Finally, for radar and scanning, the team activated FPS radar and other experimental radar features across Arena Commander. What? Yes. These systems will be reassessed closer to the release of Alpha 4.0 for a potential preview via Arena Commander. Nice. Nice. That sounds awesome. Let us know what you think about that. It sounds cool. Uh, for Arena Commander, the team concluded work on the first version of Custom Lobbies, which went live in Alpha 3.23 alongside general bug fixing. They also added team assignments, allowing players to arrange their teams in the lobby before entering the game. Support was also provided for the Gravlev race leaderboards. Initial work was completed on the first pass of a new EVA up only map for FPS game modes with playtests scheduled for the upcoming weeks. Uh, additionally, the team began marking up all Arena Commander locations with the room system so they're compatible with radar. The Good Doctor was completed. Um, with the rest expected to be finished in the coming weeks. The new front-end style was fully approved and began implementation. Polish was complete on new animations, and the first example of a brand takeover was approved using Drake. This will be used to guide the teams in creating more takeover designs for future events. What? Nice, okay. Two new strike teams were created uh, to focus on two modes, one of which is FPS Horde. Um, for FPS Horde, the game mode and the initial setup were completed alongside the deliverable scope discussion and task breakdown. The primary goal of this mode is to provide developers with a fast, easy, reliable way to iterate on the development of spawn closets, creature and human AI and FPS radar. The team will assess the game mode closer to Alpha 4.0 on the feasibility of introducing it as a publicly playable experimental mode. Yeah, right. Okay. Sounds cool. Additionally, the team worked on several quality of life initiatives for developers, including new vehicle control manager debugging, they also added dummy players to Arena Commander, which allow the developers to test scenarios with actors that mimic players. For example, that this was first used to reproduce issues with team balancing and their scoreboard UI when a high number of players connected previously. This would have required either multiple developers or multiple clients. Finally, the team resolved a major issue with the team balancing and spawning for Alpha 3.2, 3.2, and assisted in the resolution of a critical issue with the analytics, including the creation of a new gameplay analytics dashboard. Further progress was made on the mission system refactor, including the implementation of the contract generator, the querying of active and completed missions from the mission service, and a rework of the mission sharing flow. The team also updated mission entities to support streaming and refactored the mission system to use both the mission broker and contract template systems. The data structures required to refactor missions were provided to the mission design and content teams too. Further support was given to mission design for the updated delivery contract system that interacts with the upcoming freight elevators too. Man, have you seen this freight manager? Damn, that looks cool. I like that. That's a nice little piece of UI. Gameplay features continued with the closest closeout of freight elevators, storage access kiosks, instanced and personal hangers, and commodity trading updates. The UI flow is currently being updated to provide a more streamlined experience when managing the warehouse inventory and moving items via the freight elevator. Items like weapons, armor, and furniture can now be brought up too. Stacks of items can now be split up into storage access and freight elevator kiosk UI. And filters for item categories were implemented. Damn, this is big, this one. 
Economy, last month, the effort as reward algorithm was documented, which enabled the economy team to determine the technicalities of implementing this mission system refactor. Once live mission rewards were based on time and difficulty to complete. Part of this involved establishing sensible time estimates for hauling missions and finalizing the reward balance on the Copian and Amarok missions. They also supported Invictus launch week and existing cargo missions are designed for the refactor of the shop system is underway that will provide more flexibility for trading commodities and item shopping progress was also made on an algorithm to determine the base prices of commodities oh damn look at that oh yeah i also noticed that um like storage containers in the reclaimer had changed and were more sort of suitable to what it does which was also cool Lighting, lighting spent time finalizing work on instance hangers. Once complete, they kicked off new content for Alpha 4.0. They also began the look dev stage on a new cave arc arc archetype, archetype, archetype. Blah, blah. Locations may saw the landing zone team fixing bugs for instance hangers before moving on to a mandate for Alpha 4.0, including crafting the remaining stations for Pyro. Yes. The organics team continued iterating on new biomes mission design throughout may mission design continued working on con cargo missions specifically polishing the abandoned flow uh, this is used when a player decides they no longer want to play the mission for example if they have already picked up a mission the contract will give them an allotted time to deliver it to a closer location and take less of a reputation hit if the player doesn't deliver the cargo in an allotted time it will be marked as stolen. Oh my god. Planning was also done for the mission system refactor, which is required for server meshing. This will also bring the processes and pipelines used by the team up to date to ensure everything is aligned and with the current standards. Future content plans are underway with some actively being built. Mission design also aligned with tech design on their deliverables to see if more of their upcoming gameplay can be utilized. Pyro based repair missions are being actively designed. Oh my god, hopefully this means we can get the crucible. These involve replacing components containing radiation and power management management via charge and drain. Oh my god. Narrative may kicked off with a flurry of activity for the narrative team as part of scoping out responsibilities for Star Citizen 1.0. They looked into taking a larger role in the oversight and maintenance of the social AI in the universe. This includes reviewing and adjusting existing civilian behaviors so that the personalities of the various locations and landing zones come through. The team is also prototyping new behavior types that will appear throughout some upcoming locations as well as previously established ones this led to initiative to develop vertical slices of social spaces to test out a variety of larger scale mechanics such as day night schedules updates to the vendor bartender behavior and some mission providers in a contained space to make sure they're providing the desired content before expanding as part of 1.0 development further work was done on the location stories for the major landing zones with the team members working with design to tailor the story of the gameplay these missions will provide exciting opportunities for players to embark on adventures and embellish local storylines the team also continued to support upcoming patches by providing narrative content for some of the upcoming mission modules providing additional in fiction names and descriptions to items and working with the core gameplay teams on future mechanics on the website the narrative team posted a whitley's guide to the hercules and a new batch of galactopedia entries which i see all the time Online technology in May, the online services team focused on wrapping up the social services backend refactor, which will improve the performance and scalability of social features, including chat, friends, and groups. It will also allow the service to handle more concurrent players and requests and help the team to add new features more easily in the future. The team also spent a significant amount of time helping to stabilize Alpha 3.23 by triaging issues and bug fixing, including 12 critical and 24 major bugs. Additionally, they began working on 
potential Alpha 4.0 release features such as Mission System Refactor, the Marker System Refactor, the Player Trader feature in support of server meshing. R&D, the R&D's teams. So what is the R&D team? Does anyone know? I don't know. Alpha 3.23 continued throughout May for volumetric cloud rendering. Uh, stochast stochastic cat mule ROM feature texture. Filtering was implemented for the new half-res render mode upsampler. The number of ray marching steps now also scales with scene depth to improve performance in scenes with near distant occluders, buildings, cockpits, terrain, and etc. Moreover, progress continued on the temporal render system, well, resystem mode, all confidence metrics and transmittance filtering received further tweaks and improvements at first draft of the code was submitted for internal use tech design tech design supported multiple areas of development for upcoming release patched oh my god including resolving bugs related to creatures interactables cargo hangers and item banks weapons and performance issues oh my god Additionally, the team were involved in a variety of initiatives for gameplay-related systems, internal tools, and workflows. For example, they added the ability for mission designers to change AI pilot skill levels depending on the mission. Affecting their accuracy, they also outlined design requirements for the transit system refactor and code syncing on for the design team. Tech design spent time setting up test levels, harvestables, and the spawning system for upcoming creatures and began work on interaction improvements for kiosk screens. Work continued on a new location dis distribution tool with May's work involving designing the initial rule set for locations, placements, and improvements to workflow and aligning with other teams on next steps. Progress was also made on internal scripting tools with the team syncing with coders on slow workflows to help the designers improve the user experience. That's good. UI, the, the Montreal-based UI team worked on a variety of mandates in May, including tasks for cargo, ensuring all visual elements were polished and any bugs were thoroughly fixed. They also collaborated closely with the core gameplay pillar on the resource network and jump points. Meanwhile, the UK team continued updating the heads-up displays, the HUD, across multiple ships to improve their functionality and aesthetics. VFX, like other teams, the VFX team put the finishing touches on their work for the Alpha 3.23 patch, fixing the last minute bugs and polishing effects um, where safe to do so. VFX was also completed uh, effects passes on several new vehicles, including the thrusters and damage work was also begun on jump point effects. Um, these have existed as prototypes for a while, but the team focused on getting the effects fully functional, working closely with the VFX programmers and the features team. Web platform, the web platform teams concentrated on preparing for the anticipated traffic surges during Invictus launch week to support Alpha 3.23 and Invictus launch week. They established a special support process to ensure prompt incident response. The system services team was also planned and tested the platform's automated scaling schedule to handle the expected traffic waves effectively. This Invictus marked the first major traffic event since we transitioned our infrastructures to Kubernetes. What the? And it was a great success. It provided an excellent opportunity to enhance our platform's observa observability and alerting systems despite hitting record traffic levels, which I thought they had when I you know, went on the website and everything. We experienced no performance issues. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. The, shut, the site shut down multiple times and I had a lot of issues trying to buy a ship. May saw the launcher team focusing on version 2.0.1. This is currently in development and will be released in the coming weeks. The team have been working hard to address issues with the authentic authentication error handling and other bugs that were reported in launcher 2.0.0. These improvements will result in a more stable and reliable experience for users. Some of the key elements for the next version are improved error handling and a more intuitive UI with better performance issues involved expired sessions and 3001, 2000 errors were fixed too. Workarounds and troubleshooting guides were also added to the RSI knowledge base. 
Hope you've enjoyed. Peace out. See you in the next one.